On the occasion of Marlowe's 450th birthday, Dennis Rawlins the critical U.S. historian and astronomer wrote an extensively condensed in-depth analytic historical essay in volume 18 of Dio, an international journal of scientific history on the Shakespeare Marlowe authorship issue. The essay was entitled, Marlowe Created Shakespeare. The sentence implies, that Marlowe himself had created his pseudonymous artificial poet author named Shakespeare, whose name he had thought up, slightly modified in a cunning way, for life-saving motives, from William Shakespeare, a London businessman, originally from Stratford. The essential of the Marlowe theory is presented on the second title page. Bard Beard. There, Rawlins is telling us, that Shakespeare was Christopher Marlowe's front. The five short introductory core sentences, below, are hardly comprehensible to a lay person, at first glance. Let's shortly explain the five headings. Number 1, Pressian Holy Strat Jacket on Two Stunning Central Realities. In plain language, that is, there is an unholy Stratford shielding of the media and press on two stunning core realities. Number 2 Milo died 12 days after Star Chamber torture prospect. In plain language it means. Milo died, he was stabbed to death, only 12 days after he was mortally threatened by torture over charges of treason and heresy. As happened to his friend Thomas Kide. Number 3, Author Shakespeare debuted fully mature, two weeks later. In plain language. Sources show. That Shakespeare's mature poem Cycle Venus and Adonis, his very first work, appeared in print already 14 days later after Marlowe's disappearance, June 1593. Number 4 100.000 to 1 odds against tiny intervals random occurrence. In plain language. The probability of such a tiny time interval between the fall of Marlowe and the immediate ascent of Shakespeare approaches zero. Number 5 Why not inform the public and not make up its mind for it? In plain language. Why the public is not informed about that historical situation, and can make up its own mind? Rawlins in his essay about the Marlowe Shakespeare authorship theory tied together and fully explained the yet open, mysterious, questions. The bottom line of the theory, initiated by Wilbur G. Zegeler 1895, Archie Webster 1923 and Calvin Hoffman, 1925, is. Because of high treason, the mortally threatened poet and dramatist genius Marlowe and then superstar of the London theatre created for his escape Shakespeare by inventing, and finding, a living cover name, a real businessman, and actor. Shakespeare, Stratford. Let us illustrate by now, according to Rawlins, listing unsolved fundamental questions, answerable with the help of the Marlowe theory. Why? Not a single Shakespeare manuscript has ever been found? Because at the time there existed only a singular dramatist genius Christopher Marlowe, together with his nominal leader and frontman Shakespeare acting as cover for illegal activity. Why, not a single surviving written letter of the world's greatest writer, Shakespeare has ever been found? Because in those days, there existed only a singular poet and dramatist genius Marlowe, superstar of the London theatre, from June 1593 together with his selected nominal frontman Shakespeare, acting as cover for mortally threatened Marlowe. Why did the literary world, in 1616 fully ignore Shakespeare's demise and didn't take any notice? 
because in 1616, there did exist only a singular poet and dramatist genius, Marlowe, forced for life-saving reasons to change name and identity is Shakespeare, a name borrowed in a tricky way from a real living person and businessman in London, Shakespeare from Stratford. Can it be pure coincidence? That is, does it really make sense that poet genius Marlowe died within days, accused for a capital crime, of high treason, because of a banal dispute about an invoice in a tavern? This is highly improbable. The accused, mortally threatened singular dramatist genius Marlowe didn't die but had to escape the death penalty by faking his death. Selecting Shakespeare as nominal frontman acting as cover for his future safety. Would the killer, Ingram Fraser, servant of Marlowe's best friend and patron Thomas Walsingham, really stab Marlowe in the head, instead of his torso? Because the faked body, not Marlowe's, but John Penry's, was already dead when a stab wound was inflicted. Be aware. Marklessly killing a man after enraging him, by stabbing him in the frontal hard skull bone is virtually impossible, and also not instantly lethal, as the coroner report states. Why, Marlowe was stabbed at all, once he was disarmed. Ingram Fraser, according to the coroner's report, grabbed the dagger of Marlowe attacking him, and stabbing him above the right eye, May 30, 1593 instantly dying, as documented. How, in 1593, could it happen, that a yet completely unknown poet to genius Shakespeare, appeared suddenly, out of nowhere? Consider. Within two weeks after Marlowe's alleged killing, the first printed high-level poetic work with a yet completely unknown author named Shakespeare appeared as Venus and Adonis, Opus 1, in June 1593. Can the absolute seamlessly transition from Marlowe's departure, May 1593, to the appearance of the yet totally unknown Shakespeare, June 1593, with his Opus 1, Venus and Adonis, within two weeks become, believe it or not plausible at all? It becomes immediately probable under the acceptance of the Marlowe theory, mortally threatened dramatist genius Marlowe didn't die, his escape was supported by William Cecil, helping to fake his death for life-saving reasons, taking a frontman Shakespeare as nominal cover for his subsequent literary activities, that is his Opus 1. V and A 1593, and Opus 2, Lucrece 1594. How to explain the four-year silence of Shakespeare? With no record of his name connected to any play until 1598, before Love's Labours Lost, Richard III and Richard II were published. Concerning the silence, it has been argued that Marlowe during this period still hoped, he would receive a royal pardon. How can it be, that none of the remarkably mature plays, of Shakespeare, prior to 1598 was associated with his name, but in 1598 suddenly twelve previously staged plays were listed by Francis Mears? This fact can plausibly only be answered with the help of the Marlowe authorship theory. Why do we find a mutually confirmatory, triple negative blank, of Shakespeare's education? Because we have three, quite independent, and mutually confirmative pieces of evidence of William Shakespeare's blank of education or schooling. One his detailed will's failure, to hint in any way at a literary inclination. 2. His Latin's smallness. 3. His totally blank record of education, especially university. Why there is not a single positive evidence, that the author of Hamlet was educated. Be aware. All of William Shakespeare's undisputed personal records are non-literary. 
a virtual impossibility, on the hypothesis, that he was a writer. From 70 personal records survive for William Shakespeare. Not one. Reveals his supposed primary professional occupation as writing. In any case, how do you explain, as long as you call yourself an honest Stratfordian, why not a single handwritten letter from William S. from Stratford, the world's greatest writer has ever been found? It can only mean believe it or not. That William from Stratford has never written a letter, and or never communicated by letters. Ought there not to be, at least, some positive evidence, that the author of Hamlet was a higher educated person? The glaring problem, Johnson reported about Shakespeare's small Latin and less Greek. Shakespeare could not have learnt much at the Stratford Grammar School. If indeed he went there at all. Marlowe, even as a Cambridge undergraduate, was already a gifted translator of Latin authors, for instance of Ovid and Lucan. Why is the will of Shakespeare, from Stratford, that of a non-literary person? Shakespeare's exceptionally detailed will, mentions not a single book or manuscript, or any other hint of a literary person. This is not acceptable for an author of 18 plays of the first folio. Not yet published, and only printed seven years later, after the Stratford man's demise. Why is the style of the Shakespeare plays clearly so Marlowian? The place, and the value of Marlowe, as the leader among English poets, cannot be overestimated enough. His plays, Edward II and the Massacre at Paris is in the blank verse style of which Marlowe was the acknowledged establisher in English drama, why, actually not Shakespeare. Why were the many allusions in Shakespeare's plays, to other playwrights? so exclusively to Marlowe. Consider. The abundance of Shakespeare's quotations, echoes and allusions to Marlowe, compared to other literary contemporaries, makes most and only sense, if you accept the Marlowe theory, this is, Marlowe and Shakespeare. As Marlowe's pen name, were identical. Why was Shakespeare first folio? engineered and published by Marlowe's literary executor, Edward Blunt. Blunt published Love's Martyr, containing their phoenix and the turtle. He entered both Shakespeare plays, Antony and Cleopatra and Pericles, Prince of Tyre in the station as register in 1608, and he was also a friend and a professional colleague of Thomas Thorpe, the publisher of Shakespeare's sonnets. If Shakespeare was a cover for a genuine playwright genius, why would the true author have to hide? Marlowe had the connections to the highest advisor of the court and, definitely the motive, to escape imminent torture death. If he escaped he became Shakespeare, immediately and just as maturely as his former self. How can it be? that the Marlowian theory chronologically sews together the careers of Marlowe and Shakespeare, with the seam fixable at mid-1593. Marlowe's survival appears less a speculation and more a perfect potential resolution of a long intractable mystery. Shakespeare first appears publicly as a writer immediately afterwards, merely thirteen days, or less, after Marlowe's alleged killing, issuing a dedication of Venus and Adonis which calls an, earlier, that is a pre-written, poem his first work, but more important, announcing, not yet written, a new second poem, Lucrece allegorizing his crime against the Queen.
Dennis Rawlins is concluding his essay asking, What is the value, and what is the coherence of Stratfordianism? Defined as the belief in the poet genius of William from Stratford vis-à-vis -vis his collected insights, 